This Rose, episode 17. Now. <laughs> let's go, maybe, rather than now. We have fucking dancers. Though. This Rose, episode 17, let's go. Yeah! Yeah! Can, we, can we have fucking dancers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one question, let's go. Turn and do it now. This Rose, episode 17, now. <laughs> So this week, England versus Fiji in a quarter-final in Marseille. We've had an eight-day prep for this game from our last game against Samoa. We got to Marseille on Monday and we stayed here all week. We started training on Tuesday, so we had a bit of time after the Samoa game just to have a breath, have that extra day, get the traveling out of the way. Um, so it feels like we're set, we're in place. So that's how the week's gone. The fact that we're in a quarter final this week, maybe it hasn't sunk in yet for me. Maybe, maybe it will hit me tomorrow or the next day, but it's really felt like, just like we have done every week, taking it one game at a time knowing we need to improve, knowing we need to win, um, and nothing changes at the moment. Thank you, guys. I've been lost in the prep really so far, to be quite honest with you, and having those extra couple of days after Samoa and just being fixed here has just given us more time to really get into, into work and, and, and use that time to, to whether that's extra analysis, recovery, or, or time off with family, or or use that time to, to unwind and rest. We've made the most of our time this week. On the wings, going uh, Johnny May, Elliot Daly, and a 15, Martha Smith. Selection this week. I've been given the opportunity to play again. I'm delighted with that, really excited about it. My family are coming out to watch. I don't take it lightly. I know I've got to be at my absolute best and give it my all. The nature of this level is not everybody in the 33 can play. And, and there are some boys who are going to feel hard done by to be missing out just because of the quality that we've got. Um, but credit to absolutely everybody, we ripped into training. So the boys who weren't involved and the boys who were found a way to step up and just and, and do what's best for the team and that's that's exactly what is required of us to go into to personnel we've got Marcus at fullback Fred's been incredible and it, it's, it's a tough one for him to take as a bit of an older guy for him and the, what I've said to him I think it'll be brilliant for him it's going to make, make you such a better player um, you're so young and talented so stick at it and get better and I, I know he's going to bounce I'm, I'm really not worried about Fred But for Marcus at fullback, what does that give us? We know Fiji kick the ball longer, so we probably do not as reliant on Fred's incredible ability in the air. Um, and, and what's that going to give us? Marcus's attacking flair coming forward. Um, he's looked electric off the bench. He's, he's done everything he possibly could to be involved, and he's got the chance this weekend. So it's exciting. We've got Elliot who can move the ball, Marcus who's, who can counter, move the ball, and attack. Be creative in those wide channels off the back of a bit more space with Fiji potentially kicking the ball longer. So, the game against Fiji, um, I played in that at Twickenham six, seven weeks ago. It hurt, it hurt to lose that game at Twickenham as, as a send off game before a World Cup, especially seeing as how well we started the game, how well we know we could have played, uh, an opportunity missed, and um, and some mistakes made and some hurtful lessons learned. Setting that aside and stepping back, maybe that was a good thing. Um, of course, you never want to lose a game, but um, we haven't lost since. The reaction we had from that game, the kick up the butt it gave us, the way the boys got hold of it, the way we got together, the way um, we've been a bit of a different team since, I'd say. To be honest, it's, it's a game I'm looking forward to. We've got a few wrongs to right, um, and we owe these guys. We owe these guys our very, our, the very best version of ourselves. They gave it to us um, that day, and they beat us. But we want to give them our very best version of ourselves. Um, so it's an opportunity that I'm looking forward to um, on Sunday. It'll be 
out here. There, oh, look, come out, mate. Come on. Out you come. Here he is, look. Never too far away. Are we rolling? What are you doing, mate? Just, uh, is it my time to speak about you yet? No, it's not your time. We're speaking about the team. Speaking about, yeah, the game at the weekend, the week, yeah. the World Cup. Yeah. Um, not here long enough, I think. Yeah, you'll have your chance in good time, mate. But you're never too far away, are you? Well, just let me know, mate. Yeah. Just, just let me know when I need to speak about him. Yeah. I'll just call your name. You won't be far away. See you, mate. ta -ra. George Ford, hey? Listen, he, he is my best friend. It's good to have him You know it's not on the programme? For you, monitoring what I'm doing. It doesn't say, George, look what Johnny's doing. No, it doesn't. Not. No. He's probably the person who I pick the phone up to for, for for reassurance, for guidance, to talk through things. Although we're actually quite different, we put a lot into what we do. We're, we've been through similar situations, whether that be injury or a game we're not happy with, things just I feel that only he really gets on a level that I get, if that makes sense. Knowledge-wise and talent-wise, he's probably one of the best rugby players. Or, or, or maybe the best player I've ever played with. So to, to be around him and pick his brains and to learn off him is something I've definitely exploited. Um, I'd have been a fool not to. Um, and he, he, is a, he is a really good guy. So um, it's pretty constant the way we are with each other. Beneath that, I like to think that to a serious side, we're there for one another to help each other, really. Leaves no stone unturned. Always got a plan. Knows what he wants, knows what he needs. Can't fault him, mate. Some days it's, right, let's get down to business and don't really bother each other. Some days we really wind each other up and can't stand the sight of each other, really. So it's pretty random in terms of when that happens in the week, but uh, yeah, it keeps some good entertainment for the boys. Probably the most professional player uh, I've ever come across, I've ever played with. Uh, the consistency in which he does that day to day is something I've never seen before and he carries on to do that. He's obviously obsessed with getting better, his recovery stuff, and he goes through this sort of process in the week to make sure he's right for the game at weekend. Prep's always been a huge part, or recovery, or, or warming up, or performance, whatever, whatever umbrella you want to put it under. Um, it's something I've always been heavily invested in, always chasing a percent here or there, really. So what that includes for me, what I've always done, always been there, is, is stretching. I, I did a lot of athletics growing up. It was 30 minutes in front of the TV when The Simpsons were on every evening, and that's pretty much stuck with me. Um, people who know me from college or, or from rugby tours when I was a teenager know that I stay in and stretch, and, and that's what I do still, really. I'm gonna stretch every day. Um, I tend to do that in the morning or before training, along with some physio, some soft tissue. And then I've got a menu of things really to pick from once I get back from training. And that could be getting in an ice bath or a sauna or under a red light or some more treatment or get in the pool or get my recovery pumps on or even just have a nap. Just anything I can do to be as best as I can prepared going into training and feel good as quick as I can after training just so that I can get on my loop and, and, and repeat. Um, I'm just a big believer in the consistency of effort would be an intensity of effort really so it's more resilient and bulletproof exercises whether that's like my side planks for my adductors after training, my hamstring work, my tendon loading, these are all things that just make me resilient and, um, and keep me healthy really so to go after those things in the gym instead of trying to squat a big squat or, or, or lift a big heavy weight those things become more important as you get older you're over a little teapot short and stout here is your handle and here is it a spout or stout yeah. spout well it's time to pour the kettle in the cup lift me up and tip me out i'm a little teapot short and stout is it stout or sprout um, Sophie, my wife's out here with me, um, and my son Jackson. Jackson was born two weeks before this all kicked off. He's four months now, that's how long we've been in camp, basically. Alongside this incredible journey I've been on with the rugby, that's been, been an incredible journey, becoming a father, and, um, and what a special little, little boy I've got, and, and how grateful I am for that. You're not bothered about rugby, are you? Um, just interested in milk. You're a milk monster. Beyond that, how incredible Soph's been. 
yeah, to, to, to do what she's done and to be able to do it without ever making a fuss or worry for me. And that's allowed me to be fully invested in, in, in this. She's basically on her own with the newborn for the first time, jumped in the car and, and popped over to the 2K and just cracked on with being a mum from abroad, driving on the wrong side of the road with him in the car, driving to Lille to get a train, to get a plane and just to do it all with a, um, a smile on her face and, and really enjoying every moment of it. I'm in awe of her, really. Would you like to spin with me? Would you like to spin with me? Would you like to spin with me? It's just unlocked a, a, um, a part of me in terms of how much I love him and how much more I love Soph um, and how in awe and how spectacular it all is. It's just part of me that was instantly unlocked the second he was born that I didn't know I had. So it's, it, it's, it's made me a different person in terms of I've got an extra layer to me, but the rugby focus, rest assured, is still there. And um, I want to win games and, and get him on the pitch after the game. Just thinking, how can we simplify it? Start the game, we can... Simplify it, boys. As a group, we, we are here again in knockout rugby uh, of a World Cup. Four years ago, we were a, a good group of us were in the same position. Four years previous to that, a good group of us didn't make it out, out of our group at the home World Cup, which was obviously incredibly disappointing. But um, I'd like to think that the past experience has put, puts us in good stead for what's coming this weekend. Um, but we know how like, sort of special these, these weeks, these games, these moments are because um, Obviously, a World Cup comes every four years. You've got to do incredibly well to get out your pool, to give yourselves an opportunity to play in knockout games. It's one we're really excited about, one we feel very privileged to be a part of again, but one we've ultimately all worked hard for, and hopefully we can go out and perform at weekend to take us to the next stage. Thank you. 